Good afternoon to you. Mark South of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. It is Monday, July 6, 2020, and we have a lot to talk about. So let's try to get through this as quickly as possible. We do have Edward out here in the North Atlantic, one of those sort of hors d'oeuvres storms. I don't like calling them junk storms because they all matter. There's shipping interest out there, and even though these are forming from impulses that are coming off of the North American continent. They're not truly tropical in their origin. I get that. They still matter, and it counts towards the overall seasonal um, scorecard, if you will. But we all know, too, that the real season, so to speak, the real meat of the season starts when we get these systems down here and other systems over this way. But these do matter. Edward, you know, fifth name storm, earliest that it's ever happened. I get all that. But um, I think the biggest takeaway here is that it's a sign still that the Atlantic is going to be favorable. I mean, come on, it's only early July, and we've already had five name storms total, and you can just imagine where things are going to go once climatology really starts to favor more development out of the deep tropics. Elsewhere, down here in the um, Southern part of the United States, we do have Invest Area 98L. I'll take a close look at this in just a moment. Another disturbance down here east of the islands that we'll take a look at as well. So quite a busy picture in the eastern Pacific. We have three areas to watch. Uh, the one that's probably going to develop is this one. 90% chance over the next few days we will take a look at them all. All right, so satellite imagery here. What's what? Well, here we have Edward over the North Atlantic. Uh, again, this formed from this large area of vorticity energy that stretches all the way back into the southern United States. Down here in the deep tropics, a fairly potent tropical wave. We'll take a close look at that and what impacts are expected from it over the next few days. In the meantime, still very prevalent Saharan air layer working its way off Africa across much of the deep tropics, kind of keeping things suppressed and pushed to the south, but nevertheless... Yeah, we do have that strong tropical wave approaching the islands. And yes, it's only early July. And I keep hinting, you can just imagine where things are going to go uh, once we get towards the end of July and, and into August uh, from there. And right there, hard to see on this particular satellite shot, but Invest 98L sitting over uh, southwest Georgia. And then we'll talk about this system a little bit uh, towards the end of today's discussion uh, as well. All right. So vorticity. Here's the, uh, the I mean, this is really neat to be able to see this. And it owes to what I was talking about. Large area stretched out thousands of miles, kind of an old frontal boundary. And from time to time, these little impulses of energy, there's one right there, maybe a couple here. But then there's the one that's associated with Edward. Yes, they do consolidate. They're able to uh, bundle the energy and develop into small, non-tropical origin cyclones over fairly warm water. So they are tropical cyclones by definition, even though they are not your typical heat sources for their beginnings like this system. That's the vorticity signature uh, or spin in the atmosphere of the tropical wave that's headed towards the islands. And then here's some energy in the southeastern Pacific. All of this down here, of course, would be tropical in origin, um, but these other systems are not. And there's the system over Georgia that we're going to have to watch. Uh, probably going to be a big rainmaker and just general messy weather for portions of the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic. We'll zoom in and look at that closer in just a moment, at least the forecast. Speaking of zooming in, let's zoom in on Invest Area 98L. Uh, wow, you would think that a tropical storm made landfall last night over the Florida Panhandle and was moving inland today. That certainly is what it looks like, uh, but it's not. It's not a tropical storm. It's just a very well-defined surface low, good convection associated with it, and a little area of thunderstorms has erupted out ahead of it. Some of these storms could move inland. Well, they are moving inland as they push across Florida, eventually making it back out across the water, I guess, the Atlantic waters. So heads up along um, areas between I-75, which, of course, if you know your geography, there's I-75 there, I-95 over here, I-4 cuts between. So 
uh, Jacksonville, the outskirts, and then south. Keep an eye out, your radar scope app, whatever you use, even up into southeast Georgia. Uh, this is a very potent low pressure area, lots of deep convection with it. Um, pretty amazing to see this far inland. And yes, this will have some impacts uh, for the east coast, and we'll examine that in just a moment. In the meantime, a very strong tropical wave. Now, why isn't this Invest Area 99L? Well, a lot of it, I think, has to do with the computer modeling indicating that this really doesn't have much of a future. And it's a tropical wave. It is mentioned in the outlook, right, from the National Hurricane Center, so it's got recognition. But the computer models really don't do much with it. And so there's not much concern in the longer term, I guess. I don't really know how they designate what's an invest and what's not. But the bottom line for us and for you down there in the islands is it's there. You need to pay attention to it. you got Barbados over here, um, areas from uh, Trinidad, Tobago, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Grenada, up to Martinique. Um, yeah, this is all headed your way. And maybe the northern extent of it, you can see there's a little swirl right there and a blob of thunderstorms here, some lightning. That's what those yellow speckles are. This overall mass of energy and moisture will be moving through this region. Maybe the northern extent could affect the areas up here. Uh, just be aware of it. You know, if you know of any newcomers that have just moved into the islands, you know, it's not a hurricane coming, but you guys know you get flash flooding you get the gusty winds and some uh, some heavier thunderstorms can bring lightning strikes. Uh, and it's hurricane season, so you do get these easterly waves. They bring you the fresh water to help fill your cisterns, your tanks. That's a good thing, but it can lead to uh, some problems, and you just need to be aware. Again, I think it's mostly going to be from Martinique and point south through St. Lucia down to perhaps the Trinidad and Tobago area with the southern extent of that moisture envelope and maybe, just maybe, eventually reaching up towards the U.S. British Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico and beyond. I'll show you that when we look at the GFS uh, computer modeling in just a moment. Nothing's really changed here in terms of the sea surface temperature profile for the Atlantic Basin. Very, very warm water compared to average um, for the main development region. Cooler than average here in the tropical Pacific. That's not changing at all. And in fact, that is going to lead into what we go over on the very last tab right there at the end of today's discussion. Actual water temps in the Gulf of Mexico. This is just ridiculous. I mean, folks, this is really concerning now. Uh, let me outline this in blue so it really shows up. This line that I'm drawing, I'm outlining, and I'm just going to generalize it down here to the best of my ability. That's 30 degrees Celsius. That's 31 Celsius right there. And then right here down around, I think that's the Florida Bay, is what that's called, north of the Keys, um, near mainland Monroe County. 32 degrees Celsius. Okay, what is that in Fahrenheit? We're talking about 86 87, 88, 89, almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit water temperatures. And you can see the scale down here. Anything in this green color and to the right is 29.7. Okay, just the blue color. That sort of, um, what is that, almost like sea green or whatever, is 29. I mean, good grief. How do you even deal with that? It's 94 degrees out in, uh, you know, you're out here in the Everglades, and you go down and you jump in the water in the Florida Bay, and it's water temperature is 90. I mean, what is that all about? Really, really concerning if we get a hurricane to tap into that energy. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I don't hype stuff. This is concerning. Luckily, all it's going to take is just a weak tropical wave, and it can stir that up pretty quickly. Because I know also, I'm going to try to make sure I balance my concern. This is also very shallow, relatively speaking. This is easily disturbed. So hopefully, we can get a weak disturbance to kind of mix it up. Because if it's a hurricane that taps into this, unbelievable what could happen. All right, so just keep that in mind. I don't want to frighten you. 
But that's got me concerned. And if you've watched my videos, you know it takes a lot to get me riled up, and that's amazing. Uh, also interesting here off the Mid-Atlantic, my neck of the woods, the Carolinas, uh, I went to Shackleford Banks, which is right over here, a couple weeks ago with the family. Water temperatures were like 78, 79. I went down to Wrightsville Beach the other day, sometime late last week, before the 4th of July crowd arrived. And uh, the water was about 80. And I was like, eh, not, I'm not ready for that yet. Now, water temperatures are approaching 81, 82. Uh, 27, 28 Celsius. And that's going to be interesting to see how, as this system sitting over Georgia today, off the chart, moves up and then tries to either ride right up the coast, on the coast, I don't know, we'll see. But water temperatures are fairly warm now, right off the Carolina coast, and that'll be interesting in terms of where this system ends up. So let's paint the picture of what we're watching. We're going to be watching this area through here, how that evolves. Actually, I have gone too far back into time. Let's get this caught up. Da -da -da, the analysis. Here we are. This is where we should be. All right, so we're going to be watching this area here and this area right here. So as I kind of tab through here and use the arrow keys, watch what happens with those systems over time. Uh, first of all, the tropical wave, I'm going backwards now, backwards and forwards. It does move through the islands down there. You can see that, kind of moving through the islands here. So, yep, some showers and thunderstorms. That could be a problem. Again, just... You know, gusty winds, heavy rains, that kind of thing. Moving through that region, possibly affecting Puerto Rico, eastern parts of uh, Hispaniola, and then moving up into the southeast Bahamas from there. So, again, you folks down here, and right now I'm just focusing on this tropical wave. We'll deal with this guy in just a moment. Um, islands are up first as this moves through. So just be aware, okay, you know, I know it's not a hurricane, but... You guys are real in tune with this. I'm just trying to help keep you on top of it. It'll move by, and then the weather will return to paradise-like conditions, right? Right. All right, so the system off the southeast coast, or on the coast, but moving off the mid-Atlantic, what happens with that? Well, it's hard to say. Let's uh, take a real quick look here at a different extent, and for that, we'll go to the eastern U.S., so we can broaden out the uh, scope here. So this is about 90 hours out, 96, 102, finally to 120. Go back in time. Generally, the GFS shows this staying loosely organized and just inland. All right, so let's go back to 72 hours and switch this over to last night's European. The GFS was from this morning, 12Z run. This is last night's 0Z run of the Euro. And the Euro, the ECMWF, has it more offshore here, well, more straddling the coast uh, than the GFS. But generally speaking, at 96 hours, fairly similar, kind of up the coast there till 120. Finally, by day six, is up into New England. Um, really, a lot's going to, I mean, duh, is going to very much depend on how far offshore this is able to get. And I just don't know. I mean, if it's something like that, more wind, more rain, you know, hurricane? No, absolutely not. Maybe a tropical storm, another week. And I say week, that's just wind. We, we, we focus on impacts here. Rain, beach erosion, not good beach days, rip current problems. Those are all hazards, and those can be problematic. And remember, it all comes down to how does this affect you personally? And yes, this could have some impacts from the Carolinas, Chesapeake Bay region, Southeast Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, Jersey, up into New England over the week in front of us, all right, the rest of the week ahead. So please keep that in mind, all right? Not a huge problem, but problematic enough that you want to keep an eye on it. Also, uh, in the Pacific here, we're going to watch this area right here as it comes together over time. Still no threats to Mexico or Central America, which is great. Move that on out to the next five days or so. Maybe if this does get going, as the GFS and the European are both doing this, uh, showing this ramping up, maybe you get some waves for Cabo San Lucas as this goes by and elsewhere along the Mexican coastline. We'll see. That's a pretty solid 
hurricane in the modeling. Again, this is showing vorticity. It's very tightly packed, circular. Water temperatures are warm there. We have a, a, a disturbance. I think this one's going to be the first uh, hurricane in the eastern Pacific. All right, so the last tab I'm going to show is extremely important. And again, I'm going to really push my level of concern as we get deeper into July that I need you folks to pay attention and take this seriously. With all the rest of the stuff going on, and I understand there's a lot of um, concern about science, okay, and health science, and I'm not even going to get into that. Tropical meteorology is a lot easier to deal with because it's just, I don't know, it's, there's not as much question. There is probability, and yes, things can not turn out the way we expect, but when you see signals such as this, I want you to pay attention to not only what I'm saying, but what other people like who I'm citing right here. Ben Knoll, meteorologist down in New Zealand. Doesn't matter. He could be on Mars. <laughs> he still is going to tweet some very helpful information, and this is no exception right here. So the latest ECMWF seasonal update, weak La Nina conditions, very important to note here, Atlantic ACE increased by 20%. So the, uh, the accumulated cyclone energy for the Atlantic, the ACE is up to, uh, now it's at 100%. I saw some other numbers. So it went from 80 to 100, an increase of 20%. Unseasonably warm fall for the U.S. La Nina-like late year pattern. Wetter than normal, drier than normal. This has got those areas outlined. Here's the graphic. Wow. This is the Euro. The green is your above normal precipitation anomalies. That paints a very ugly picture for the Atlantic Basin hurricane scenario going forward. Through September 2020, I mean, this, this is as clear as a picture as you can get this far out in time, and I want you to take it seriously. Please, do what you can to be ready. Think about where you're going to go if you have to evacuate. Take it into consideration this annoying pandemic situation, you got to embrace it. You got to say, yep, we have to accept it that it's part of our lives now. How are we going to deal with it? We can help with the science here with tropical meteorology. We know what's potentially coming. Let's use the time now to make those plans. That's what I want you to do. Don't be fearful. Don't be upset. Be motivated. Get yourself ready. All right. And I'll help you do it from my end. That is it for me from, for today. Uh, I'll be back. I'm just trying to think of my schedule for the week ahead. Lots to watch. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, with more. Remember, I'm on Twitter, at Hurricane Track, YouTube, Hurricane Track. Everything's Hurricane Track. And we are, of course, supported by our awesome patrons on Patreon. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in to me. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.